I mean, 46 is pretty late to still be battling with this shit, but I mean, what you gonna do? You've said some pretty superlative things on uh, Twitter about Empath, but then you, yeah. you've you also taken it back. Yeah, I have. Well, it's just an album, it's just music, it's just That's you know, a song. both sides of me having the same conversation. <laughs> okay, well, what do I feel about Empath? I feel that... Um, What I feel about it, I don't want to say. You know? I feel like it's... Um, I feel like it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's... Um, I feel like it represents me taking my life apart, laying it out, analyzing it, and letting it go. Let me tell you what Mike Keneally said. Okay. So I emailed him, and uh, he said... Devin is a unique creator in my experience. This is not to embarrass you, by the way. No, it's all right. The speed with which he works and the totality of his vision and the uniqueness of the results, he is a genius in my estimation. Empath is a truly amazing record and one of the most rewarding projects I've ever been involved in. Morgan told me it was an incredible project. The people in it see the genius. Hmm. And I think that's worth repeating even if you don't want to say it <laughs> well I, re I mean uh, when you tell me these things about these people my first thought is about them as people and how much i like them right you know mm -hmm. and i think my favorite thing about both mike and morgan is that i forget that they play music mm. and that when we have hang time it's nice right yeah yeah i think my biggest problem with it is um I don't like being the f focus of that because I feel that um, uh, all I'm doing is trying to honor something. So when they say these things about the record or when people say these things about the record, my hope is that people ultimately know that it's not me. Mm -hmm. It's the process. And the process is... Um, uh, perfect, but I'm not perfect, and the record's not perfect. It's it's, but what we're trying to achieve is is something that is perfect, and maybe that's why art exists because it'll never be perfect. So you, there's always things to write about, right? right. And I work uh, super fast, but I also feel that it's because um, when you're listening for it. Um, it's immense amounts of information and, and unless you're focused you're going to miss it so it's just about your process has to be super fast and, and super efficient and, and and you have to exercise and you have to meditate and you have to do these things because otherwise I think you end up internalizing it that this is you as opposed to the collective unconscious right where you are just dipping your ladle into it and again i think the intention of it is like you're dipping your ladle into it because you think it's beautiful and yeah. you think that it can ultimately help yeah and i really appreciate that mike says that and i really appreciate that that morgan morgan says these things but um i'm super uncomfortable with it and it's not <laughs> that i um and it's not that i don't you know it's not that my, i don't have an ego because clearly my ego is enormous but um it's just like when i sent the record out to the label um they used all these superlatives about it mm -hmm. and i just didn't know what to do i was like i don't want to respond i don't want to write i don't <laughs> right. want to hear yeah. it i don't want to yeah. Yeah. at first all i was just like i hope they like it i hope they liked it but then when they really liked it i was like oh my god i don't want to think about it right, right. so yeah so, you know, clearly just by this interview, you can see that my um, hang-ups as a dude are what, you know, makes the whole thing such a gong show, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we're here, you know, and I'm not uh, so-and-so from X Magazine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, right? Well, I appreciate that as well because what I was always afraid of is that it was going to get popular and then I was going to become a like a representative for this sort of thing right. that, um, that I don't understand. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, 
So I try and surround myself with people that um, understand and and respect me and respect the process and you know want to watch Rick and Morty with me or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like that in that way I can do this. I can totally function if there's not a huge amount of importance placed on it. If I you know I sometimes I'll have people listen to the stuff and they feel something about it that is over the top yeah. and I'm just like, Oh my God, I don't, I don't want right. to be here for yeah. that. Right. You know? Yeah. What's I think interesting is we were talking beforehand about Morgan. You just needed to let him do his thing. Yeah. Why don't you tell that story? Well, uh, because the music I, I, uh, I tend to be privy to, if we're going to put it that way is, um, a very specific vision, like super singular in a lot of ways. Um, there's room in there for someone's color to um, make it unique. Mm-hmm. But within that, there's fundamentals to the song, maybe 60 to 75% of the song mm-hmm. that has to be a certain way. Like it's like that hit has to be there or else that mm-hmm. won't work. Mm-hmm. And this here has to go like this or else that won't work. Right. So, but past that, like what you do with the symbols, what you do with the fills, like all you. Mm-hmm. But those 65 to 75% of the things are really complicated a lot of the time. Right. So with Morgan, um, because I've spent a lot of time with Morgan, we've done a lot of playing and he did the Casualties a Cool Project. And mm-hmm. I get along really well with his family and we have a good social thing. You know, um, I asked him to do it because he's Morgan and he's an amazing drummer and beautiful person wanted that energy but he hasn't had to learn music since probably like Zappa or right. or Fred or any of these things that he had done so so it, he was turning himself inside out trying to learn this stuff and he's sending me a text he's like man I've been working on this for hours and I've got four bars and right. I just it just doesn't yeah sink in right he's not a chart kind of guy no <laughs> But when you let him be Morgan, there's no one as good. That's right. So I've been watching him and he's like, I really am, I'm wanting to do this right and everything. And he's playing. I'm thinking, man, but what you're doing doesn't sound like Morgan to me. It sounds like, Mm -hmm. you know, you with like a leash on. So I was like, oh my God, we're, we're the the deadline for this record's coming up and there's so much to learn and I can't leave this to, to chance. Right. So I said to him, I said, well, let's do a Skype call. And I said, well, what if I got two other drummers, right? One guy does death metal, who's the best I could find for this, right. and he's a good dude. And one guy does progressive heavy metal, and he's he's willing to, like, chart it and play it exactly the way his cymbals, any way that you want it. And Morgan was like, thank God. That sounds great. <laughs> and I said, okay, but I still want uh, you on there. So so let's figure out how to do that. So I, I gave it some thought, and then we, every drummer had a different process. Uh that you know on the documentary i think it's easier to sort of hear that there but uh with morgan at least when he showed up what i did was i took each song that i wanted him to do so maybe he had four or five songs and then parts like the mm-hmm. first song is um uh you know it's it's a noob and then sam and then morgan and then mm-hmm. sam and then mm-hmm. a noob and it's like all frankenstein together so what i did with all morgan's parts is i took the song and i took each riff that i wanted him to do and he was like well, do you want me to learn it ahead of time? It's like, actually, no, I don't want you to learn anything. <laughs> like, nothing at all. Right. And he showed up kind of confused, like, well, what do you want me to play? And I had taken each song and taken each riff, and then I looped each riff for 20 minutes in this massive long session. And I just sat in front of him, and without telling him what the riff was, um, I had an iPad, and I put on the iPad a picture of what I wanted to achieve, right? Like, there's like, if you look up YouTube, there's like four hour sunsets. That's where you taped it to yeah. his kick drum, right? Or something yeah. like that. So I said, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Huh. And I just asked Nolly, I said, just press record, right? Yeah. Right. And then usually three to four minutes in, Morgan was playing phenomenal things. And then I was like, okay, next riff. And then I just <laughs> chopped it up and I put it together, right? That's awesome. And it was great because at the end of it, he's playing things that not only no one else would think of, but he wouldn't remember if we had to do that for a week of rehearsals, right? right? right. Like, right. 
and plus I got his first take of it and mm-hmm. got these crazy little embellishments and and we had a great time and it was super easy and I didn't have to work right which was like awesome mm-hmm. because I uh I like getting it right but I don't like working which is <laughs> you know Tell, like he, go, ahead. go ahead even at the recording like Mike um who loves working like I had written all these crazy little guitar things that I played once and then forgot because I was like, oh, it's too hard. I don't want to play that shit. That's like, but Mike was like, well, what is that part? And I'm like, I don't know. He said, well, let me figure it out. And then Mike would figure it out and he'd learn these bits. Yeah. And then I'd be like, well, the idea is for the bass player to do that. And he's like, okay, well, maybe you can come in here while the bass player's learning. I was like, God, that sounds terrible. I was like, why don't you, because you learned that bit, why don't you show him how to play it? And he was all about it. So he ended up taking Nathan and showing him all these parts. And the whole time, like Anoop, um, Sam, both those guys learned their parts. Like I had Anoop come to Vancouver and I showed him exactly. And Sam, I gave him all the MIDI so they knew it exactly. So the whole recording, Anoop and Sam were in there with the engineers. And they were so intent on getting it right. Mm-hmm. That, and I knew what the parts were going to be. So I didn't have to be there. Mm-hmm. And Mark, uh, Mike was so... Uh, uh, conscientious about getting these super intricate parts like exactly mm-hmm. that he went together with an engineer and he said and I watched TV for two weeks <laughs> and it was great because when I came in everybody was so dedicated to getting it right and I, I had told them ahead of time like this is what it is here's a demo the demos are super specific these are the notes this is exactly how I want it to sound, right? Yeah. But I don't want to do that. It's like really difficult. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What What brought Mike in? <laughs> like, had you worked with Mike before? He called me. There's just a... He called me a couple of years ago. And yeah. he was like, I'm not doing anything. We've never met. We should try and do something together. That's what's great about Mike. I yeah. love that guy. Yeah, same. And he came to Vancouver and we wrote a bunch of big crazy shit that... Uh-huh. Arguably, doesn't have a lot of place anywhere, right? Which is separate from all of this. Oh, it's not on the. Oh record. yeah, it's like eight songs of just like explosive creative wank. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was like a lot of fun. They sell pills for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What are we gonna endorse them? You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, uh, ECW. E- just like, <laughs> explosive creative wank. Yeah, that's a good name for a band. Actually, you should make that ad. I yeah. can see that happening. ECW? <laughs> okay. 